we're going to be looking at the third part of this lesson um, on the river processes. Uh, you can actually check my videos to look at the part one and part two. Um, so in part three here, we'll be looking at river landforms, the different river landforms that are formed around a, a, a river. So river processes, and uh, we'll look at river landforms and the river uh, landforms, we have the erosional landforms, uh, which your syllabus needed to know about potholes and waterfall. Then we look at transportational landforms of futures, uh, majorly the Mindes and Oxbow Lakes. Then we have depositional futures like deltas, levees, and floodplains. So we're going to explain how um, these seven uh, major landforms, seven landforms are formed. So quickly, without wasting so much time, let's fly. Now, potholes, how are potholes formed? Uh, so you see, potholes are round, oval shaped holes in the bedrock of a river. So uh, as you can see, there are round, oval shaped holes at the bedrock that's around the bed of a river. Now, they are created when sediment. So they are created when sediment, these are the major keywords you look at, when sediment accumulate within naturally occurring small depression. So here, you have a small depression on the seabed. Then you have sediment accumulating inside. Now, once the sediment accumulates inside the seabed, now what will happen is you cannot have a turbulent flow of water into the small depression. And that turbulent flow will now swell the stone or the sediment that have accumulated the small depressions around the depression, therefore it will now erode the depression through process of vibration. And once that is done, the depression will now become wider and bigger. So once that process continues, you find out that, that uh, as it becomes wider, more larger sediments will accumulate and circular or turbulent uh, uh, flow will still happen, will still happen, thereby making the pothole uh, bigger. Now, this is how it looks like in a real life situation. Um, these are potholes uh, that are formed by turbulent erosion. So when you have small depression, you now have sediment accumulating in them, and you now have turbulent flow of the uh, 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 erosion, then you now have things like, um, as a result of vibration, the hole becomes wider, leading to the formation of potholes. So when explaining potholes, what you should remember is first turbulent flow, Remember turbulent flow. Um, two, you remember small depressions. Then after that, you should remember um, abrasion. Sort of a turbulent flow to make uh, the small depression becomes wider. Now the next one we're looking at is waterfall and gorges. How are they formed? Now you see a waterfall is formed when you have hard rock overlays soft rock layer. So what that means is, like in this case you have, this is a hard rock, which is overlay a soft rock. So what will now happen is, um, the hard rocks are usually resistant to erosion, like you see here, hard rock, soft rock. So the hard rock is resistant to erosion, so the soft rock is less resistant to erosion, obviously. Now, the soft rock is eroded, so the soft rock easily gets eroded by erosional processes. So you can check our part two to understand how these processes work. Erosional processes by hydraulic action, abrasion, corrosion processes. Now, once that, is, um, once that happens, it will now lead to the buildup of an undercut, uh, thereby forming a plunge pool, which is the deepest part of uh, the waterfall. So here is the deepest part, because what is happening here is vertical erosion. Um, so most uh, erosional processes takes place here, thereby leading to the formation of a plunge pool. And these soft rocks get eroded, leading to the formation of an undercut. And once there's an undercut, it will now leave behind an overhang. This is an overhang of hard rock. It's an overhang because there is no any um, rock at the, bin, at the bottom here that is supporting it. So over time, what you have is the hard rock will now collapse. The hard rock with this overhang will collapse. Once it collapses, the waterfall will retreat backward, leading to the formation of a gorge. And a waterfall uh, moves back, leading to the formation of a steep sided 
gorge. Steep side means it's the slope here. If you look at it, it's quite really straight and so it's steep. Now, next is the formation of a minder. I used to tell my students if you need to explain the formation of a minder, you need to remember certain keywords, which is one, uh, the outside bend. Another thing you need to remember is the inside bend. You need to also remember erosion, uh, deposition. You need to remember what is uh, a slip of slope. Slip of slope. And lastly, you need to remember uh, a river cliff. So if you are asked to describe how a waterfall, a minder is formed, uh, it's quite really simple if you remember this keyword. You find out that um, there is more erosion on the outside bend and deposition. So erosion at the outside bend and deposition at the inside bend. Uh, yeah, so leading to the formation of um, things like a slip of slope around the inside bend uh, because it becomes shallow because of the deposition that is taking place there. So around the river cliff, it's where you have the fastest amount of erosion, which is the outside bend, leading to the formation of a river cliff. So what you see here is the current is fastest at the outside of the bend because of the channel is deeper. So here is deeper. So erosion is faster there. So it's the talwag, which is the fastest part at which the river flow. Therefore, more erosion takes place in the river bend, forming a river cliff, which is this. Now, the current is slower on the inside bend, and therefore the channel is shallower, and it leads to deposition and the formation of a slip of slope. So if you look at this, this here is the outside bend, and here should be your inside bend. So what you are saying here, or what you're trying to ex explain is, around this outside bend, you have erosion, and because you have erosion, it is the deeper, deepest part. And because it's the deepest part, it can form this. If you look at the cross profile, this is the cross profile. Let's say this is A and this is B. So that means this area here is the outside bend to be A, and this area here will be B. Um, so that part will be deeper, and therefore there will be a river cliff here with uh, a steep side here. And this area is more erosion. But at this inside bend here, you have the position. And because there is deposition the taking place, it is usually shallow. So here, you see, it is usually shallow and deposition leading to formation of a slip of slope. That's all about minders. So um, this is like a further explanation about, about it. So you can actually pause and read. But any of the two, it's really, really good. It goes to give you a full mark in IGCSE. Then next, the formation of an oxbow lake. Uh, you should know that an oxbow lake first formed from a minder. So how you explain the formation of an oxbow lake is really quite simple. It's summarized inside this box. Um, so what it means is uh, the fastest flow of water on the outside bend, which we already established. Now erosion at the outer bank, that means at the outer um, outside bend, erosion at the outside bend, which make the neck of the minder become narrow. So there is more erosion here, so if you see this neck here becomes narrow, the outside bend here also becomes narrow, that's what, because of further erosion. Now, so it can cut through, this neck can actually cut through um, during flooding. So during flooding, this boat can meet and now cut through, leaving behind this other channel. So uh, cut through during flooding. From minders, we now seal by deposition. The cut off minder is now an oxbow lake. So a cut off minder, because of this process, we now form an oxbow lake. So that's it. So this diagram here is just also trying to explain it. Like here, you have deposition in the inside bend, then the outside bend, erosion at the neck of the minder. So the neck gets what narrower. So once the neck gets narrower, the next thing that will happen is that. Um, the river will break through the minder neck at a time of flood and leaving behind what an oxbow lake because the deposition will take place here. Now, formation of a delta. Um, so, this is there, there are certain keywords you need to also know when describing formation of delta, which is flocculation. 
Flocculation occurred due to salt water. So flocculation is when um, loads or materials deposit or get sink to the, to the ocean floor or bottom of a river because of the amount of salt content that is found inside. So uh, that's I'm trying to explain this word called flocculation, flocculation here. So let, let's see how a delta is formed. So when you have a large amount of sediment carried by the river, sediment are usually referred to as the loads. You have large amount of it carried by the river. So the sediments are deposited in the lower course of a river because a delta is uh, formed in the uh, lower part of the river profile. Now, so deposited materials are not washed away due to lack of current or energy. So at the lower part, you know, the energy or speed of flow has reduced. And because the fresh water from, like in this case, you see the water from the river meets the sea. So as a result of that, you find out that the flow or the energy in which the river have will reduce. So there is no enough energy to continue the movement of this and sediment. So the materials get deposited. Now, therefore, making the river flow to be very slow, like I just said, also flocculation. Because here, in this case, when it moves uh, at the mouth here, it meets the sea, and the sea have high salt content, high salt content, so you expect that flocculation can occur, so materials will get deposited. So deposited silt, so once these materials get deposited, what it does, it, it will now block the course or the river channel. So once it blocks, the water will still have to find its way into the sea, so that will now make the river to split into what is referred to as distributaries, therefore forming a delta. Okay, so uh, I think the last river feature we need to know for your IGCS syllabus has to do with flood plains and levees. Flood plains and levees. Now, first, um, flood plains and levees are found in the lower course of a river. It's found in the lower course of a river, and um, one of the major characters of a lower course of a river is that of lateral erosion. So it is formed first from lateral erosion. So when you have deposition in the channel on the bed of a river, and as so also as a result of displacement of water, um, when water flow outside its bank, uh, outside the bank and into onto the land, so flooding of river, so the water overflows its bank, like you can see in this diagram here. So first, wide flat valley created by Minders migration. So heavy, heaviest material get deposited first once the river overflows its bank. Heavier material get deposited first while smaller sediment are deposited in layers further away from the bank because um, the water can easily still move them uh, at a much more distance with the energy it has than the larger materials. So carrying large amount of sediment, so slow moving water due to friction and deposition of sediment on the flood plain in layers. So you see sediment get deposited in layers over a period of time. So after the first one it happens, it happens again, it happens again, it get deposited and the larger materials also keep depositing at the bank now, so the heaviest material is deposited first nearest to the river channel, forming a natural embankment called a levees. While the deposited sediment, sediment further away forms a floodplain layer. So that's just it about river features or river, sorry, river landforms. Um, the last part of this lesson, we are going to look at river opportunities and flooding. That will be the last part to finish your IGCSE syllabus on river processes. So thank you so much. See you in the next class.